The following is a presentation of the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. We are back. My next guest tonight, please welcome a very funny guy, Artie Lang. We are joined right now by a hilarious comedian. His latest project, the Artie Quitter Podcast. Please give a warm welcome to a good friend of the show. Here's Artie Lang, ladies and gentlemen. It always makes me laugh when I see Artie Lang on stage. <laughs> Knowing I'm going to outlive him. <laughs> a Jack Daniels swilling pizza eating, dog hating, whore using, cocaine abusing, hairy back, big belly blowhard from New Jersey. The fat little bastard known as Artie Lang! <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, are we on? Yeah. We've been on. <laughs> Have we been on? I started it like a minute ago. All right, let's see what that is. Oh, my God. Well, listen, the fun's already started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gilbert Gottfried is uh, a comedian, and he's in my uh, kitchen. And uh, this is a long series. Of, you know, you've seen Seinfeld getting coffee with comedians. This is me, comedians in my kitchen. And uh, quite frankly, it's not uh, catching on the way Seinfeld <laughs> I've gotten zero heat from this. <laughs> me, me and David Tell were uh, were, were driving uh, in a cab uh, after the Comedy Cellar one night up uh, up to his apartment, and we passed by. Th- there's that I won't say the street, but there's a garage where supposedly Seinfeld has like 80 Porsches. Oh yeah, yeah. You know he he bought a garage, a whole like parking garage where he just has Porsches, <laughs> and <laughs> that's all he has. I can't buy Porsches here. <laughs> Like different kinds of por- like- my Rolls Royces are in the other garage. <laughs> I can't have them mingling together. <laughs> you don't put a Porsche with a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Anyone who knows cars knows about this. <laughs> so he's doing a lot of the relatable material. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, uh, Jared, uh, how has your material changed since you became a billionaire? Well, I used to do about how you know. Uh, uh, Sephardic Jews shouldn't date, uh, you know, <laughs> Hasidic Jews uh, in the Crown Heights. And now I do how uh, you can't mix a Rolls Royce with a Porsche. <laughs> if you have 80 Rolls Royces, don't put it near 80 Porsche. <laughs> he literally has 80. And I think, like, like, he's one of those guys where we read in the newspaper that he might have bought the Batmobile. I don't, I, I'm not sure. He might have bought the, the Adam West Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and he, I think he restored it, so it's like you could drive it. And um, you can't put the Batmobile <laughs> with the Austin Martin. <laughs> the two don't mix. <laughs> you can't put the Adam West Batmobile with the Michael Keaton Batmobile. <laughs> I saw them trying to mix my yachts together. <laughs> 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 By them, I meant the Mexican crew. <laughs> oh, my God. All of my private jets have a separate place. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the material he's doing now. The blue collar crowds in Minneapolis going, you know when you have to wait on, your jet is third on line to fuel? <laughs> How about, how come I don't read anything in the daily news about the price of private jet fuel? (laughs) (laughs) The the New York Post and the Daily News don't print the private jet fuel going. (laughs) 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 They're talking Met Bleacher tickets have gone on two two bucks. Uh, yeah, so uh, we were thinking about like his kids, Seinfeld's kids, uh, uh, going to the prom in the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his son losing his virginity in the space shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, honey, I think a uh, little, uh, I don't know what his name is, uh, but what, what uh, Irving? Little Irving Irving signed. (laughs) Little Irving, honey, Irving took the space shuttle to school. (laughs) Does he know how to operate it yet? (laughs) Yeah, Neil Armstrong is tied downstairs in the basement teaching. (laughs) The chauffeur in the Batmobile is George Clooney. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, I like. I I, I don't do stereotypical black chauffeurs. I have a white guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just uh, yeah, the, 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 so out of touch of like you know your kid. Like, God, if I was his kid, I would make sure I lost my virginity in one of those cars. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, here we go. What is this? The highest paid comedians, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now you're done. I'm going to take a wild guess. My name is not <laughs> on the top of the list. It goes <laughs> It goes Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, probably Kevin Hart. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Jerry Seinfeld, and it's, it's literally eight black guys with one name. <laughs> That you've never heard of Elmo Calvin. <laughs> That's uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Conquest. Sapphire. Sapphire. <laughs> Slick motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Talent. Remember that guy? This guy's name was Talent. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is really. That is really putting pressure on yourself. <laughs> and then you see him and you go, "Oh, maybe it's like calling a, a fat guy tiny." It's an ironic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. So Seinfeld is at the top still in 2015? Because I would think, it, well, Kevin Hart's name is there. Of course, Jeff Dunham. Oh, yeah. Jeff, at what point did you put Jeff Dunham's dummy? Does he, does he consider it? <laughs> uh, Jeff Dunham, uh, okay. Kevin, uh, he could, uh, Seinfeld is still up there, though. I guess he's still, because I think they're counting the residuals still every year. That's not fair. The Seinfeld residuals, I think they count. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld once said there are four stages of comedy. Make your friends laugh, make strangers laugh, get paid to make strangers laugh, and then catch herpes in the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and make people talk like you because it's so much fun. There you go. <laughs> <It's> yeah. A- <laughs> Yeah, so in other words, the point there is uh, Jerry Seinfeld is not at a party in the Hamptons right now doing a Gilbert impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart is not uh, is not in Beverly Hills doing his best Artie line. <laughs> so, um, uh, okay, he could have stopped at number three and have been okay, at least financially. The Seinfeld co-creator and stand-up comic ranks as the top-earning comedian having raked in $36 million between June 1st, 2014 and June 1st, 2015. <laughs> with little show, But wait a minute, I would, again, not to get into the subject again, but I would say Tracy Morgan would have to be the high... <laughs> <laughs> and then and then three guys who opened for him that night. Artie Fuqua. Guys you never Yeah, but Tracy Morgan, I think they <laughs> I don't mix my Fuqua. <laughs> I got such a complaint. <laughs> Get Forbes on the phone. <laughs> I take umbrage with your Jerry Seinfeld article. <laughs> 36 million. That's what I made for the first quarter from Walmart. <laughs> I got Sam Walton's balls on my fucking treasure, my treasure chest. Someone come here and read me this article. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is Tina Fey home? I needed to read something again. <laughs> Could you tell Mr. Baldwin that Tracy's on the phone? <laughs> I need him to. It's not my contract. It's something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fucking my esophagus hurts. <laughs> oh, it's fucking funny. Yeah, Tracy Morgan. I would. I'm gonna give it to him. I mean, you know, of course, Seinfeld uh, made his money by sitting down and writing new jokes, even though he's worth a billion dollars, and uh, you know, traveling the country and saying them and uh, getting residuals from a uh, show he took time to create. And Tracy got his money because. Uh, <laughs> A tire, a tire truck driver veered into his lane. <laughs> I've been, you know, I, I got the mixed reaction at the comedy store. I tried this joke. I've been, <laughs> I, I shouldn't open with it is the problem because it, uh, it digs a hole. I, I get up, I've been getting up on it because uh, Tracy Morgan's new home that he just bought. It's insane. It's, I mean, really, it is like the White House in <laughs> North Jersey. And it was a picture of the paper. And I said, you know, I saw that and I'm very happy for him. But I said, if there's any Walmart drivers in the audience tonight, I'll be at exit 8A. <laughs> On the turnpike at 2 a.m., and I'll be driving, uh, you know, a great gas home, and uh, it's okay if you kill him. (laughs) 
<laughs> if you kill Greg, it's fine. As long as I survive, we'll be okay. And you have to either do stay up for 24 straight hours or have a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of Remy Martins. <laughs> <laughs> Read something to me. Oh, Christ. Well, that's it. With this first eight minutes, we're not in show business anymore anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the next time I invite Gilbert over to my kitchen, it's going to be to auction off the table. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me, do, let me describe the dynamic in here because it's very, very impressive. Uh, Gil- Gilbert uh, and I are doing a pot, doing exactly what you hear us doing now, but we'll be doing it on stage at Caroline's Comedy Club on 8th Avenue and 50th Street, right in the heart of Times Square, legendary place, um, and uh, for the New York Comedy Festival, November the 11th at 7 p.m., and, uh, you know, you can go get a link somewhere. I don't know why you would. Just go. <laughs> That's all the information you need. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's part of the Comedy Festival. It's going to be just me. Dar- uh, Gilbert's wife is here. It's, the details are it's just me and him uh, on stage with a couple of mics. Doing the podcast. Yeah, and it'll air. It won't air that night, obviously. Okay, so it's in front of a live audience, and it'll it'll air as Gilbert's podcast and my podcast, the same thing. And um, so uh, Gilbert agreed to come in and promote it uh, here sitting in the kitchen. So that's what we're promoting. But another very exciting thing is happening. There's a gentleman with a camera here. Uh doing a documentary on Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, yeah, because uh, it's so important. <laughs> it, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a documentary on guys who haven't bought a shirt since 1978. <laughs> what the, well, so describe this. How did this come about? I have no fucking... <laughs> You guys, there's guys, there's guys who invented vaccines who haven't yeah, had vaccines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the guy that cured polio. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a documentary. Huh? Never had a dinner. And he. This man. Yeah. <laughs> He cured polio, and he never had a dinner. Ho, ho, he, he, ha, ha, strange things are happening. That's uh, for anyone uh, born born after 1911. (laughs) That's Red Buttons. Uh, Red Buttons had a bit literally on on the roasts. Of the Dean Martin classic seventies roast, where he, that his bit was, you know, he tell tell the guy, you know, they're having a dinner for him, a roast, and he would, you know, tell jokes about other historical figures who never had oh, a yes. dinner. You know, he's pissed off that they never had a dinner. Benjamin Franklin's <laughs> wife, who said, "Why don't you go fly a kite?" <laughs> and he never had a dinner. <laughs> 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 one one time, one time, uh, Don Rickles was uh, in, uh, like goofing on red buttons by doing his set. <laughs> and what the funniest thing about Don Rickles was sometimes he would just make a face and do like a stereotypical, like a racist voice, and you didn't need a choke; he would just laugh. He would go, uh, "Red buttons is here." He was trying out a new bit, going, uh, uh, "And Will Chamberlain, who once said we play tennis, never had a dinner." <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Will Chamberlain said, we play tennis, never had a dinner. <laughs> but think about that. Those guys made a living doing that. I mean, Red Buttons, you know, I don't know if he was ever the highest paid <laughs> uh, But those guys made a fine living. My favorite Red Buttons, though, is now we're veering over to a Red Buttons conversation. But uh, how about Red Buttons when he would do like a love boat? And Arf, oh, yes. And he would get serious. Like, yes. Oh. <laughs> He would get serious, like he would go up to Gavin McLeod and go, you know what, uh, you know what, Captain, all I wanted. Uh, I like to goof around, sure, but uh, the only thing I wanted to do this weekend was show my wife a good time. Uh, and, and they would have that really phony backdrop of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that was Gavin McLeod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they would cut the. Now you know how shit's done. Like, we've been. See, when you shoot a film, you know, it, it does sort of ruin the. Oh, you, yes. After you shoot a movie, uh, even the, the films Gil, Gilbert and I have been in, sort of. <laughs> it brings the, cat, the, the, the curtain back a little bit and you see how it's done. All you could do uh, to me after I shot a movie was uh, when I watch a film now, I think about how fucking long it must have taken. Oh, yes. To shoot a scene, like an action scene, the, the, the close ups, the setting up of this. And that. Like like when you watch a scene where yeah. you see one guy fire and then the other guy fire the right. gun, and you realize 
the one guy firing the gun, they took like about three weeks right. of th- him shooting the gun. Uh, yeah, and then uh, God forbid you get wet in the scene, like you got to oh, dry yeah. they off. Gotta and, oh, yeah, they got to change. It really is. It changes your whole perspective on stuff. But uh, yeah, Gavin McCloud, the, 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 the love boat, you get like a generic shot of a boat, just a ship out of the harbor. And then uh, Gavin McCloud to go from Mary Tyler Moore <laughs> Uh, where he looked kind of homosexual. <laughs> With the, you know, you don't realize, Mary, <laughs> I didn't Mary. realize that as a kid. You're like, hey, Mary. man. Hey, man. <laughs> My wife is coming over, man. Your wife, really? Yeah. And, uh, and and then uh, and then he goes to the fucking love boat thing, and he's got those knee high white socks. I on. know that was that was always like. Uh, couldn't he have argued for long pants? <laughs> well, I, you know, my favorite thing was always like there were at the height of the Planet Hollywood the restaurants being successful. There was one in every city. Like they opened one. Oh yeah. For a while, you saw Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, and Stallone jetting. Uh, to the one in, you know, Seattle or whatever the fuck it was and uh, on somebody else's dime. Like, no one saw that coming, that it was yeah. going to fucking go under. But uh, there were so many of them. It was like after a while, the memorabilia kind of got thinned out. And I was thought, like the one in <laughs> the one in Butte, Montana, just has Gavin McLeod's outfit yeah. from, the, <laughs> from the pilot of the fucking love boat. And then they had the fashion cafe that were models. Yes. Yeah. You know, that, I, I, that, so I, it's I, like, Food from models. Yeah, who cares? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, food from models. Yeah, they, they weigh three ounces. Yeah, just and, a, a vomitorium. Is yeah. That right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. They, who, th- who thought that? I mean, again, it seemed like a front for just a, a European, like, cocaine operation or something. Uh, the, yeah, there uh, were Arabs behind <laughs> each and, and every time we understand that Mr. Willis is coming. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you fifteen thousand drachmas to fuck Demi. <laughs> it's good Demi Moore party until you get to know as she got older, you saw that uh, you know she would start you know, that weed she had and everything. She probably when she was young she probably fucking got high and fucked everybody. It makes you fucking so turned on. Oh yeah. It really does. But anyway, uh, I think about stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> so are you uh so you decide, how long have you been shooting the documentary for? How long oh, we're back to that. Yeah, no, well, yeah. I'm so, well, there's a guy here with a camera. I, I it's think, very disconcerting. This is one of those things where someone says, oh, we're doing this, and then I go, oh, we are? You mean the podcast? Yeah, the- you are on both. <laughs> <laughs> no, the documentary, I'm fine. <laughs> it's the podcast. So wait, at some point, yeah. someone said you were going to go to Artie Lang's kitchen and talk for yeah, a while, yeah. and you were you, you, you smoking angel dust? <laughs> I, well, okay, well, forget about the camera. It's very disconcerting because we're yelling out, you know, racist stuff. <laughs> it's one thing I, to do it in the, in the microphone. You think, there's I, a huge camera there. Going to cut, cut to like every well, CNN, I, I Jake love- Tapper. These, these two men who say they're comedians, these two animals were saying this about Tracy Morgan. <laughs> the last podcast we did, I was getting all these tweets going, so uh, you and Artie, after five minutes, turned entirely racist. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. Yeah, and I, it's thirty seconds. Well, there was a delay. A technical. But there, there, there were there were there have been clan meetings that were less racist for the first one. <laughs> But no, we're pointing out again. We're pointing. This is we're being ironic. I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> yes. We're pointing out the hypocrisy of. Uh, now you know what I can't even buy that. I'm gonna... <laughs> no, but the the the, uh, the the hypocrisy of black people who can't read. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, su- to, su- to suggest you know it was interesting. My mother called me. <clears throat> the true story. My mother called me up after uh, you know Tracy Morgan did the Today Show. He was doing other interviews, and my mother called me up and said, "Oh, this is so sad. I'm watching him in- be interviewed. Are you watching this?" I'm like, "No. What what channel?" She tells me the channel. He goes, "Oh, it's really sad. You can't understand." You know, anything you say. And I put it on. It, it was an interview from 2002. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but no, we should say, too, we bonded this summer uh, at the Montreal Comedy Festival. Oh, God. Gilbert and I, we shot a big Showtime special that uh, they said was going to air. Like that's, like, that's a good sign. We shot it like four months ago, and uh, it, it, it's, it's supposed to air in the fall, and my agent just said, no, now maybe January. It's oh, like, oh, yes, that it, means it's strong. It's like that plane that keeps yeah. changing gates. Yeah. <laughs> 
eventually it's like, no, yeah, okay, you're at gate seven. You're at gate, no, get a, get a room at the Radisson. Yeah, because back then they said it's going to film, it, it's going to be shown in Canada. <laughs> which is and, always a great thing. Oh, yeah, which is always big. <laughs> And then they said, no, it's already been sold to Showtime and Canada. And, and now it's like nobody knows whatever happened to it. Yeah, and I do, then your, your agent knows but doesn't want to tell you and waits for you like a year later to oh, ask about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, what, whatever happened with that Showtime special? Hey, you want to go to the SNL party? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, so Gilbert and I did go to Montreal, and uh, again, uh, Gilbert uh, was well, a little more pathetic for Gilbert. We, we Gilbert's in his <laughs> early sixties. I'm in my I'm in my late forties, and we still we, we agreed we agreed to do every single nasty show. Oh yeah, which is uh, a staple of Montreal's uh, comedy festival. They, it's like a midnight show. Uh, where you, the, the six dirtiest comics up there uh, do it. You, sometimes you're just one of them but we agreed to do every show we were up there for two straight weeks and you and Dara came up and you, you were smart enough to take a break in between I stayed oh, yeah. up there yeah uh, and uh, yeah it, we, so we did that and then we did other shows Gilbert got roasted uh, but you were like in a coffin what, what, yeah, what, what, that, that was I mean when you do that 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 comedy festival right. it's like you know you'll get your information that right. you're doing this show and this show yeah and then when you get out there and it's like oh so you're doing this 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 and this yeah. oh what you didn't get that right now i know yeah, they, well, they yeah. spring it on you and they, what they hope uh, is that you're so depressed in your room that yeah. you'll leave for anything yeah you're so suicidal pretty much yeah <laughs> Yeah, so they go, do you, do you want to do uh, uh, such and such a show? Like, who is He's a hot comic in L.A. He's doing a, an alternative bit that he does on the stage. It's great. He'll fit right, he'll fit right into it. <laughs> he, he makes fun of your career for t and half an hour. Uh, and you sit there and get paid nothing. Of course. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You don't get paid extra money. But we, uh, we did, at the end of the two weeks, we taped the nasty show for a Showtime special. And I, I hosted it and brought everybody up, and uh, it seemed to go well. But again, that was in uh, what was that? But July. It, it even when it did well, yeah. it never did great. <laughs> it was never one of those things you said, "Wow, that was really good." It was one of those things where you said, "I hope the check clears." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because that was another thing they goofy into with in Montreal. They give you a number, and then you realize they take the taxes out up there. And, yes. But then your manager or agent commissions you on the gross like in other words yeah say you're getting paid whatever you know like uh like 10 grand or something and you're not getting paid 10 grand because they take the canadian taxes out so it's, now it's six grand but your manager and agent they they, they commission you on the 10 grand oh, of course. <laughs> so now it's like after whatever the fuck you kind of break even for the two weeks and and then it's like when you get the checks, then it takes like about a year for them to figure out if it's Canadian funds or American like oh, funds. Oh, yeah, Canadian money, too. You have no respect for it. It's just like... <laughs> Enormous blue pieces of paper, like a picture of a mongoose. Oh, on that, it. and you could see through it. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's, shiny. Yeah, you don't care. You'll just spend it. You'll go. I don't give a shit. Take this. Yeah, I don't want it. It looks like play money because <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is exactly. No, play money's worth more. <laughs> <laughs> But there was a, a very, very, you know, speaking of Gilbert and I getting racist, uh, <laughs> it was a very, very, very diverse group, the uh, the comics. There's about, six, I guess, five or six comics that do every nasty show. Uh, one was a guy named Jimmy Carr, who was an English guy, uh, who, uh, you know, again, one of these guys, in show, he's like a throwback, I guess. I don't understand guys like this. He would come to do the nasty show it, it dressed in, you know, what looked like a decent, uh, you know, like to me, it was a tuxedo what he was in but he, he would change he would, he would come to the gig and change into like a huge three-piece suit a beautiful like press three-piece yes. suit and I go why are you doing that and then he would just get right back out of it he goes I, I, I don't know I have self-respect <laughs> I'm like I don't <laughs> gives a shit I think he was trying to just impress us. But uh, then there was a guy, an old... Did you know the older guy who was real thin? Uh, Carr, Mike... Uh, not Carr, Mike something. Mike Walton, Wellmont. Mike Wellmont. I don't the think... The older so. guy yeah. was real thin. Yeah. I never met him before, but this guy, he looked like Mick Jagger. 
uh, you know, age-wise, uh, but apparently he'd lost like 80 pounds or something. And uh, he was diabetic, and you know, you talked about it. It was, you know, whatever. Uh, but Llewellyn was on the show, and she was a... Uh, <laughs> Llewellyn Here we a, go No it's a, Again Gilbert and I Just seem to find this <laughs> Llewellyn was a Heavy set uh, African American uh, Comic uh, what? Woman what? Uh, She uh, I'm sorry I'm not familiar <laughs> With that term <laughs> Well, right, because it's a term that makes no sense. Like, your favorite African-American actress could be Charlize Theron. Yeah. She's actually or, pretty. Um, uh, and my favorite uh, African-American entertainer, Juliet Proud. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but uh, so, so anyway, she uh, was in Barat. I guess that's her big, the, 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 oh, whoa, the that's, Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, she, she played the hooker in Barat. Yeah. And she's been in a couple Adam Sandler movies, and uh, you know she's a she's a she's an enormous black woman. <laughs> uh, very nice, very sweet, um, and uh, she had like she has dyed white hair. She's very nice, and she uh, uh, I guess she's older. She got into this business later in life. She actually did major time at L.A. County Jail. She's open oh, about it. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. She talks about it, and. Uh, She's about four foot nine, three hundred and twenty pounds, <laughs> and she has uh, she has these these press. I guess they're press on uh, nails. Those nails that are very scary. Yeah, like way. Very I mean, she has like eighteen nails. inch nails. Yeah, and they curve around to where like you're looking at them, going like, "There's no way she can wipe her ass with those nails." That's all I th I obsess about. Like, how does she take them off? Like, what if she has to shit on a plane? Does she take them off on a plane? Like, how long is she going to be in the fucking bathroom on a and plane? I, I, I was in that movie, Shit on a Plane. <laughs> <laughs> I now, you gotta were... take a shit on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> Sam Jackson. Jada Pinkett Smith. I can't what? take a motherfucking shit on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> Tim Meadows. Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> shit on a plane. <laughs> I got some shit. <laughs> Get me the fuck off this plane. I got some shit. Sir, bad news. We're all going to have to shit on the plane. <laughs> That's the premise. <laughs> the premise is this one bathroom and they can't land. <laughs> I said, fuck it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm getting out of show business. <laughs> that is the single greatest. I, mean, I want to pitch that today. <laughs> I want to go, uh, Dara, as soon as we leave here, we're going to William Morris. We're saying, Gilbert and Artie, <laughs> Gilbert and Artie have an idea. That they're, Shit on the plane. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to, uh, well, you're, you're going to notice a, a pattern in the actors we, we want to have play. Every, <laughs> everyone's an overweight black actor. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Anderson. <laughs> Sam Jackson. <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith. Charles Willow Pinkett, Stutton. Charles Stutton. <laughs> <laughs> the premise is the premise is they have to Cedric the <laughs> <laughs> The premise is they have to circle an airport because of terrorist attack and then they realize there's one there's one bathroom and then at some point they go, Hey! We all gotta sit on this plane <laughs> Shit on a plane coming this fall <laughs> Dropping in a theater near you. <laughs> this, when does this movie drop, Cedric? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Universal presents shit on a shit on a plane. Universal <laughs> eases out this next film. <laughs> Poop. Oh my god. Being squeezed out June twelfth. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Got the, you know, the, the, the sequel would be <laughs> see what, no, shit, shit on a plane number two. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's perched. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's loose. <laughs> 
you know, the beginning is like, no, the, the beginning is like the every all the passengers are in the airport and they're all, they're all eating the real like you know like greasy greasy chicken. <laughs> like the you can see the setup coming. Yeah, I'll have another coleslaw. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they could eat as much as they wanted. After all, there's a bath there's a bathroom in Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> they could use the bathroom on the land. <laughs> Little did they know they'd have to shit on the planet. <laughs> oh my god. Shit on a planet. And, and then there will have to be that clumsy exposition <laughs> where, like, uh, like one of the officials at the airline goes, hmm, you know, <laughs> chicken and ribs <laughs> it would cause someone to make a large bowel movement. <laughs> Not on this plane, you know. <laughs> But, but just when you just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> Nicki Minaj has to shit on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> iced cocoa, iced iced tea's wife Coco has to shit on the plane. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking great. <laughs> you get the like, arguments like, those diapers are for my girl. <laughs> Oh man, that is fucking shit on the soul from the makers of Soul Plane, <laughs> Airplane. Doing you've done, they've done everything on a plane, except shit on a plane. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we pitched everything at dinner like doing arithmetic on a plane. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Farting on a plane? Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> it's almost there, but not. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost there. <laughs> oh man! All right. Who's, wait a minute. There's shit all over this plane. <laughs> the rescue team. <laughs> God damn it! Who's, there's shit all over this plane. S special guest appearance from George Kennedy. Ah. <laughs> you see, like Jim Carrey gets out at the end. Do not go in there. <laughs> oh. oh god! Oh god! Okay, well I have to say we're gonna take a break. Let's take a break. I really have, I'm, I'm busting again. November 11th, by the way, we'll be at the. Actually, now I mean we're not gonna be anywhere. <laughs> Uh, the New York Comedy Festival is just canceled. <laughs> We're going to have to, uh, I don't know, Gilbert and I probably will be doing that bit at a strip club in Sea <laughs> oh, oh, and my podcast is Gilbert. <laughs> in conclusion. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast on GilbertGottfried.com. Uh, or as, we, as Gilbert, Gilbert's family knows, it's the only connection he still has to showbiz. <laughs> the only reason that Gilbert Gottfried still is a, has to go in front of a microphone. <laughs> oh. If this were like our E! True Hollywood story, like, you know, at the end, they always end up in a place where they die, like in a different city. It would, if this was yours, it would be like, coming up, Gilbert Gottfried boards a ferry for Hoboken. <laughs> <laughs> you are not shitting on this plane. All right, we'll take a break. You are not shitting on this ferry. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the break from the makers of shitting on a ferry <laughs> from the makers of shitting on a tuna boat <laughs> from the makers of shitting at the port authority <laughs> <laughs> all right let's take a quick break we'll come back with more places to shit <laughs> Hey guys, this is James Flippin of RadioMisfits.com and also one of the behind-the-scenes guys for the Artie Quitter podcast. Right now, you're listening to the free weekly edition of the Artie Quitter Uncensored podcast on the Radio Misfits Network. If you'd like to hear more, visit ArtieQuitter.com and subscribe to the four-day-a-week podcast. Use coupon code ARTIEFAN, that's A-R-T-I-E-F-A-N, and get your first month free. 
A, uh, yeah, so uh, I guess uh, that was supposed to be like a commercial break, but it was really, I was getting the uh, chocolate chip cookies with the M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you try these? Do you ever have these? Do you want some uh, of these for dessert? No, that they're, sounds like too much already. Oh, they're good, yeah. There's a type, th- th- you know what, this is, a, th- th- this is a sponsor. These are the uh, cookies for shit on a plane. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey presents <laughs> shit on a plane. <laughs> oh my God! Does that woman have to shit on this plane? <laughs> that woman is not shitting on this plane. Oh, you know, I know, you know, you know Liam Neeson in every movie he does now. He's like the, the anti-hero. Like in the beginning, he he's you know. He's, oh, he's an alcoholic. He yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, listen, I'm not a good person. Uh, you're, you're gonna hear all this. I'm an alcoholic. I beat my <laughs> wife. Sure. I, I ran guns to Cuba for years. Sure, fine. I was a corrupt cop, but I but I didn't shit on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hear. I once urinated on a plane. Sure. Uh, they're gonna badmouth me. Fine. That's fine. Sure. I smacked my kids around. Fine. That's fine. Sure. I, I once poisoned an elf. Fine. Who cares? But I did not defecate on this plane. And with your help, I can help us land in a place that has bathrooms where you can all shit. <laughs> Liam Neeson is. <laughs> Neeson is taking a shit three. <laughs> That's Liam Neeson yeah. t- taking a shit. <laughs> Liam Neeson is taking a shit on a plane. <laughs> You've seen taken one, taken, taken one, two, taken three. Now he's taking a shit on a plane. <laughs> Taking a shit on a plane with a bunch of African Americans, <laughs> Liam Neeson. I, listen, you're gonna you're gonna hear all that stuff. You're gonna hear I was constipated once on a plane. Sure, <sighs> that, that was true. You're gonna hear I had diarrhea on a plane. Sure, fine, that's fine. Sure, it's all true. But I did not shit. <laughs> I did not shit on, uh, in the cockpit of this plane. Sure, sure, you're gonna hear the uh, the the the, the, uh, the pilots are black. Sure, we all we, we, all, we all want white pilots. Sure. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, uh, th- that premise could keep going on. Yes. Uh, if you don't see shit on a plane, <laughs> you don't know squat. <laughs> You've seen Taken. You've seen Taken 2. You've seen Taken 3. Now see Taken a shit on a plane. <laughs> or you don't know squat. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. Anthony Anderson gained 40 pounds for this <laughs> role. <laughs> fucking, that is too good. That's a... That's what we call a home run in show business. Special guest appearance <laughs> by Tracy Morgan. No. <laughs> Tracy. I didn't shit on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> I got to shit. <laughs> Move out the way. <laughs> I can't hold this one no longer. <laughs> And then, when, with this one, you think you save a, 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 a pilot for Walmart veers into the plane. <laughs> a Walmart jet veers into the plane. Holy mackerel! Not again! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> Here we go again! Starting Emmanuel Lewis at Shaquille O'Neal's piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry, Emmanuel Lewis plays a piece of shit. <laughs> that shit is talking. <laughs> it's like the Shaggy DA of shit. <laughs> How is that shit talking? Is it me or is that shit talking? <laughs> is he talking shit? No, it's a shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen movies where people are talking shit. Now see shit talking. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know if you, you, Universal might pass on it. <laughs> where does Tracy have a deal? <laughs> oh, that's fucking. We we almost have to move off of that. But yeah. Because I won't stop talking about it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, something I did want to talk about with Gilbert's, a lot of the fans, a lot of the Stern fans are, uh, you know, again, I'm in Radar Online. I mean, this guy, this Radar Online kid is just really, he's not going to stop till Howard puts a hit out on him, I think. Uh, you know, how he's, he printed something else. I said, I mean, I pointed out again, because a lot of the fans bring this up, how it's weird hearing Howard gush over Ellen DeGeneres 
dancing. Like he, not only does he tolerate the bit where he used to be really, you know, vicious about it, he says he looks forward to it. Like, you know, he can see why it wins Peabody's or something. And no one's buying that, really. But uh, I pointed that out. But I also said how much I, you know, I love Howard, and it's just odd to see it. This guy printed all the negative shit. And uh, Howard pointed out that that's what this guy does. He's trying to start a feud. So this guy, I guess, is not listening to Howard. And that's something I guess Howard's not used to in the media. But he printed out, once again, every negative thing I said, trying to get Howard to comment on it. He did not comment on it today. And I, I'm, I applaud Howard for that. I, I mean, it's, you know, again, the guy will stop. I mean, I could comment on it again because I'm not on the, you know, the, the biggest radio show ever. It's me and Gilbert. It's me and Gilbert doing arguably the last comedy bit you'll ever hear. Before. <laughs> <laughs> they were still getting work at clubs. <laughs> Bananas was still calling, and then one of them said, "Shit on a plane." Uh, yeah. So, in other words, so this article uh, uh, points out the Ellen thing, and and Howard uh, put it to bed. And I, 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 I think Howard is right. I'm not going to. He shouldn't respond to it. And he'll stop doing it, I hope. But this guy, but this it, guy. This is why we brought it up in the first place. Well, yeah. th listen, yeah. this guy's going to another level, though. Oh, yes. You know, Howard, again, has not only uh, likes the, uh, the bits that Ellen does, he's gone to another level where he is friends with Ellen. Like, they hang out together. They socialize. And... The same thing with Jennifer Aniston. They socialize. They, they hang out. They, there's pictures of them on the beach, on the, you know, the National Enquirer. And uh, this guy is now printing verbatim stuff Howard used to say about them <laughs> on the air during the news, even when I was there. And it is, I, I forgot how vicious it was. It's some crazy shit. Uh, Gilbert, would you like to read uh, something? Oh, okay. This is Howard. <laughs> Again, this is, this is not Gilbert or me. This is actually Howard said this. Okay. <laughs> Who is pretending that all that this is at all entertaining? You're talking about the dancing. Huh? When she dances, <laughs> it's so douche chilly, unfunny. <laughs> There's nothing funny or entertaining about Ellen dancing to the hippest song. She's dancing to Fetty Wap. Wait a minute, wait. A minute. That's I. I said yeah, that. Oh, no, you said I'm that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's oh. me. I'll get you the... Okay. <laughs> it, yeah. I will admit it's similar. Uh, let just... Uh, okay, he gets to the... Um, okay, yeah, he goes... To, see, that's the thing. He goes to another level. He, I think he, he called her a cunt at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and, so this guy's doing a fucked up thing where he's sending... He, he's printing all the shit he used to say about uh, Jennifer and, uh, and Ellen... And, you know, I guess he's trying to get them to see it as if they never saw it before. Dan, what did Dan, can you tell me how did Dan just, just staring at me? Ah. I, uh, I'm looking for the part that, uh, that Howard, where Howard said it. Stern's hostility for the generous lesson, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the professional slight uh, in the train. The king will meet you. Uh, Okay, here you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. But start from here. Okay. okay. Read from here. Ellen DeGeneres is such a jerk. This is stuff Howard actually said. And the kid's okay. putting this in radar online. Ellen DeGeneres is such a jerk, Stern said, <laughs> noting that he's never been one to interfere at other people's professional opportunities <laughs> out of fear of bad karma. She would deny me my dream job because she doesn't like me personally, and that's why I told you Ellen's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has to do with what he's referring to is he was possibly going to get offered the American Idol judging job, and she used oh. to be... She, this is before America's Got Talent. So he wanted to do it, I guess, and she was a judge, and supposedly the rumor was she was going to quit if he came on and they wouldn't, you know, let, her, let him come on because of that. So that's what he's talking about. Uh, he... Okay. So he calls her a cunt because... Yes. <laughs> yeah. He took things to a personal level, <laughs> referencing the openly gay comic sexuality. <laughs> and that face of hers... <laughs> and that face of her Trump stole that one She looked like she smelled bad pussy 
I think before she got famous, she had a lot of bad pussy. <laughs> and that nose of her is forever crinkled, Okay, Stern said. So, uh, he wishes she had a dick. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, uh, th- this kid is trying to point out the, uh, to Ellen that this is the guy you're about to go to Belize with. <laughs> I mean, that is a major turnaround. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What is your take on that, Gilbert? You're an expert on show business. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's more. There's another paragraph. Another paragraph? Yeah, Do you want to in, Oh, in the tirade, Stern said that the friendly image the generous projects on air oh. is totally farcical. <laughs> Oh, she's such a foul piece of garbage. People who work with her know she's a tyrant ogre. This whole nice girl image of hers is horseshit fakery. She's miserable. She's a miserable woman. The outburst prompted co-host Robin Quivers to chime in. <laughs> when can we just go ahead and say she's not funny? Right now. You can say that now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when is the statute of limitations up? <laughs> we can finally admit she's not funny. Oh, man. So, again, <laughs> I, guess, I mean, listen, Ellen DeGeneres is not going to hear it on this podcast. But... <laughs> I thought she listens every week. Well, she's busy. Uh, you know, I do. But people don't realize this. I, I do start off every show dancing. They just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> you might see in the documentary. <laughs> I, I, and, I, and by the way, my face looks like I smelled bad pussy. Too. <laughs> because I, before show business, I got a lot of bad pussy as well. But again, uh, you know, I guess this kid is really on sort of a manhunt now. Uh, and people on Twitter are tweeting stuff he used to say about Jennifer Aniston, which, you know, which made what, what Gilbert just, the stuff about Aniston at some point made what Gilbert just uh, uh, read sound like, you know, uh, a love letter on, uh, you know, the, the end of Love Boat, uh, <laughs> the end of Fantasy Island when they get together. It uh, it just was he, he had that real anger, but it shows you how how great the show was. <laughs> <That's so fucking laughs> a lot of that. A lot of those jokes, I think, might have been uh, the work of Freddie Norris, the smelly guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> Fred is a classic example of a comedic genius, like uh, like I'd say Gilbert is. He has insane anger towards not not just women, <laughs> successful women, uh, you know, and uh, a woman who gets more pussy than him. <laughs> I, I, like a lot, a lot of us uh, comedians are driven by hatred for people like that. And uh, again, I so Radio Online is. Um, and they'll probably print this, what Gilbert just said. <laughs> <laughs> That's all out of my mouth. Not one word Howard said. No, I love yeah, it. Yeah. Radar Radar Online's going to go. And then they went into a bit called Shit on a Plane. <laughs> Cut to me and Gilbert at like the hearings, like the Benghazi hearings of comedy. We're, <laughs> we're, in, front of, we're in front of Jimmy Kimmel and David Cross. On the panel, uh, did you say, <laughs> did you say that an all African American cast <laughs> would get the shits on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> my client, Michael Corleone, <laughs> does not have to answer that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Mr. Godfrey, would you tell me uh, your relationship with Mr. Stern? I'm interested. Was there always a buffer between you and uh, what? Yeah, Miss, a buffer. Miss, yeah, uh, <laughs> he had a lot of buffers. <laughs> Uh, let me just say this, that a lot of my best friends are Jewish d- disc jockeys. <laughs> and one bad apple. <laughs> it doesn't spoil a whole bunch. One insanely bad apple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this committee owes an apology, Senator. <laughs> All that had to happen was that Richard Belzer had to sit down in the back and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> he, w- he wouldn't rat he wouldn't rat on another comic with Richard Belzer sitting there. <laughs> With his dog. <laughs> Richard Belvin's <laughs> little dog. Oh, that's fucking funny. Yeah, so I don't know. The, the, the Radar Online kid in, in a war that uh, Gilbert and I are right on top of. <laughs> We're covering the war. Well, again, I'll say this. Uh, uh, Gilbert, uh, you know, an article did come out saying that Gilbert was banned from the show. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I, Gilbert had every right to, to call up Gary and, and ask about it. And Gary told Gilbert that they don't have comedians on anymore. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
and then uh, Gilbert listened the next day, and they had four comedians on. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> they had the entire cast of Mad Mad World. <laughs> Joey Lewis, Buddy Hackett. <laughs> I had Buddy Hackett on. <laughs> hey, how would I? <laughs> Buddy Hackett squeezed Hey, me. you <laughs> know, I just took a shit <laughs> on a plane. <laughs> I saw Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was just doing the Robin's news, just crowbars and old jokes. Yeah, that reminds me, Robin. I saw Amelia Earhart, and she said, look at you, you fish fucker. What? <laughs> That's a Buddy Hackett punchline. <laughs> Uh, in a, he says that in a tuxedo, by the way. So, um, uh, anyway, well, I, I think you could look at that. The comedian that was on the next day was Chelsea Handler. <laughs> so you could look at that, you could look at that as, as one of two things. Maybe he doesn't, like a lot of people, consider her a comedian. Maybe that's it. <laughs> so maybe he wasn't lying to you. We don't have comedians on. We just have Chelsea Handler on. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, so that's a possibility. But were you hurt by that? Were you, because were you, uh, you haven't been on in four years and you've been, you've been called <laughs> yeah. the greatest guest in the history of that show. You were yeah. the retarded black midget. <laughs> It's Gilbert and a yeah. a retardic uh, black midget with one tooth who oh, yeah. uh, who gets thrown to bachelor parties. Well, all, all I can say about it is go for him. <laughs> he don't want me on the show. Go for him. <laughs> 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 Go for him, my man. Well, he doesn't want that. He doesn't, he'd prefer Chelsea Handler's brand of humor. Uh, there's been, a, you know, again, there's a new comedy feud where uh, uh, Chelsea Handler is accused of stealing bits from Jenny McCarthy. Uh, and then they do. If you look at, they do have similar Chelsea Handler's signature bit. The one I love. And when when comedians get together, we all talk about Chelsea Handler's bits. And um, uh, <laughs> up in Montreal, everyone got together, and you know, every year we get together. Yeah, when well, we were waiting in that basement area, we all say, all yeah. we talked about. I, and, and if you get five comedians together, at some point they will start discussing their favorite Chelsea Handler <laughs> routine. And mine uh, to this day is when she, I think she, uh, she wipes her underarm and smells it, and then uh, talks about how she blew a guy the night before. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, very funny stuff, and then makes a noise, a, a weird face, like you know, like a, you know, her face gets all contorted. It's very funny. It's very physical. Uh, and uh, she did steal that. That's early Jenny McCarthy. That's uh, early. Yes. <laughs> if you watch early singled out episode, she does that exact bit. She smells her underarms, makes a weird face, and talks about a guy she blew. <laughs> so, are you upset, Gilbert, that even though she is one of you know our generation's greatest comics, that he'd prefer to have Chelsea? <laughs> what is your favorite it, handler bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if him having her on was just a fuck you to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she is, she, she is known as having the uh, the manners of a, the manners of a chimp, and that's a, <laughs> that is how she got her name. That uh, they actually called her assistant a Chelsea Handler. <laughs> No, it's very, listen, we, we, if you're going to get bumped by somebody... And and, and she's my, the one whose father was a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she went on that ancestry. Two people got fucked by that. Uh, ben Affleck yeah. and Chelsea Handler, both, uh, again, two hilariously funny people, <laughs> uh, both went on there on Ancestry, whatever, the TV show version yeah. of and found out that, I don't think it was her father. <laughs> that is embellishing. Uh, no, it was her brother. Uh, <laughs> no, she uh, they, she found out, I think an uncle was in fact a Nazi, Chelsea Handler, and, uh, and, and Ben Affleck had one too. And both of them got so upset that they tried to manipulate. I know Ben Affleck got in some trouble where he tried to bully them or pay them off. I think mostly bully them into not airing it. And Chelsea Handler started to cry, I think. Uh, you know, that's... Uh, and, and, but there's a happy ending with the Chelsea Handler one yeah. in that <laughs> her, her Nazi father or whatever uh, never actually got too many promotions. 
So basically, <laughs> it's even worse than being a Nazi. He's just a stupid, incompetent Nazi. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is, what you're saying is, her uh, her uh, uncle, father, whatever it was to genocide, which she is the comedy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be her her motto. My my yeah, my 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 uncle purposely sucked at genocide. <laughs> And uh, you know it was just, she, she she was trying to pull, say it was justifiable. We, we're all familiar with the legal term justifiable genocide. <laughs> she was she started to cry, Chelsea. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think I don't know if it was fake or not, but uh, Ben Affleck I think really said because you know you must wonder uh, these guys like I saw where Affleck's net worth he got in trouble at the Hard Rock Casino because he's able to count cards like a really good poker player. Oh. And he won 800 grand in like two hours and they kicked him out. People forget that casinos are privately run businesses. They can kick you out just for being good at the game. Not You don't even have to be cheating. And it doesn't sound fair because they take your money, but they go, look, you're too good. You got to leave. <laughs> and they did that and he got mad and somehow uh, TMZ got a hold of his net worth. And it was 750 million bucks, supposedly, Ben Affleck's worth, which means he made a billion and a half dollars to be worth that much money. And uh, even if that's a couple hundred million off, whatever, and I think these guys make a boatload of money. I know this is true of Woody Allen, stuff you never even hear of uh, in Europe overseas endorsements. Like Woody Allen supposedly makes a boatload of money in Swiss. Oh, yeah. Swiss, you know, you don't hear about it. And guys like Ben Affleck, Brad Pitt, they just cut deals where you could put, like, Rome could, for four weeks, is allowed to put their name on the back of a pair of jeans. They don't have to do anything. They get like $80 million or something. And that's how he has that money. And I think he was deathly afraid if his uncle was indeed a Nazi. <laughs> He might lose the he might lose the Israel gene mark, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So I don't know. But I think that Chelsea Handler is missing a great promotional Heil Handler. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. I, I would uh, it, it, I, again. I felt as because you got to remember, I'm friendly with Gilbert, but I'm also an enormous fan. I'm also just enormous, uh, but I'm also a, you know a fan of Gilbert from way back, especially on the Stern Show and. To hear that, to be, you know, a, a comedian now and to ha be privy to inside information like that, to where, uh, you know, Gary tells him we don't have comedians on anymore. And then, to, to, I mean, you, you deserve better treatment than that just for the fact of showing up and all the laughs you're responsible for. You, just, you know, don't bullshit me that blatantly. Like, right to my fucking face. Oh, come on, you know. We don't, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have comedy We don't, 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 how, 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 <laughs> oh God! Like, how? How? To make, yeah, like make, <laughs> make, make, make Dougal's house of glory. Yeah, you say you saw the Frankenstein monster. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. What are you saying? Are you saying that picture moved, Lou? <laughs> Paintings can't move, Lou. I'm telling you, like, Are you saying you don't have comedians on the <laughs> show anymore? <laughs> Chelsea Hiller. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me there's no comedians on the show. No. Okay, fine. Chelsea, 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 Chelsea Hiller. <laughs> it's Chris Hard. It's Chris Hardwick. It's Chris. It's Chris. It's Chris. It's Chris. It's Chris. It's Chris. Is that Ellen DeGeneres or a young Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that is fucking great. Well, uh, uh, where can we find your podcast again, Gilbert? Okay, Gilbert <laughs> Gottfried's amazing, <laughs> colossal podcast uh, on GilbertGottfried.com. Subscribe on iTunes or SideshowNetwork.tv. And my Twitter is at Real. Gilbert. Boy, you fucking memorize that, huh? Ah, that, yes. must mean, that must mean money. And now I got to get on that march with Quentin. Uh, <laughs> what, what happened? What, what's his name? That director, Quentin. Quentin Tarantino? Yes. What, Quentin did he, what did Tarant he do? 
Oh, um, well, he said that the anti-cop thing. Oh, yeah. What did he say? Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know. Yeah, don't repeat it. It it it's kind it, it's kind of like uh, we have the story. Wait, I have the story. Yeah, yeah. We have an affidavit. We have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's from the Godfather. Oh, too. Yeah. What do you say? He goes. We have it. What the hell happened here? Uh, you say that you worked for Mr. Corleone. You were, you you did yeah, sure. murders for him. I I had my own olive oil business. I directed Reservoir Dogs a long time ago. They tell me Michael Corleone did this, Michael <laughs> Corleone did that. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me Quentin Tar- Tarantino directed this. <laughs> All right, anti-cop bastard. Yeah, the, New York, <laughs> the New York Post is not going to give you any sympathy there. Uh, all right. <laughs> what the fuck did he say? Quentin Tarantino on Monday saying the Inglorious Bastard director, uh, okay, the commissioner Bill Bratton of, of the uh, of New York City, uh, says that the director disgraced himself by giving an anti-police speech just days after the city's latest cop killing. Shame on him. Uh, blah, blah, blah. See, there are no words to describe the contempt I have for him <laughs> and his comments at this particular time. On Saturday... Uh, Tarantino joined an anti-cop rally in Washington, Washington Square Park, where he uh, riled up the crowd from a podium, beating the word, uh, be- bearing the words "Rise up, stop police terror." <laughs> uh, the director, whose 1992 film *The Reservoir Dogs* features an infamous scene in which a cop is tortured, mutilated, and killed, said he wasn't afraid to uh, call cops murderers. Well, <laughs> great, that's wonderful. Uh, Tarantino. Uh, Tarantino rep did not return a call uh, or a comment Monday. Uh, Bratton also took a swipe at the head of the NYPD Sergeants Union, Ed Mullins, who was labeled uh, some of the uh, top cops, police as uh, Okay, go blah, 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 blah. It also then says that Tarantino might now be fired from his latest project, the Universal Shit on a Plane. <laughs> <laughs> but Tarantino, you know, you don't see him a lot because he's a director. You, you knew this would happen. Hey, Tarantino's got to be 55 years old now. He's an odd looking older guy. Like, he was oh, always. Yeah. Tarantino was always an odd looking guy, even young, but he's he looks like a guy that would, uh, yeah, like he's been trapped in a. Uh, house in the Upper West Side yeah. for like he's been sheetrocked behind a wall yes. for years. <laughs> he's got that chin and the the, pronoun- the hair looks weird. But I don't. I'm a, uh, do you like his movies? Or are you are you, uh, you never got into them? I, I got to admit I'm a fan of uh, yeah, Tarantino. Some. Yeah, uh, but um, you know I know you don't like a lot of stuff past 1938. <laughs> but I'm, I'm the same way. I don't I, I don't love it. But I. I I like some of his stuff. Where do you fall on the issue of the cops, Gilbert? Because you're, you're always walking around the city. You like protection. Uh, uh, yes. What, yeah. you, I feel very strong. <laughs> Are you a fan of Ice T's uh, album <laughs> Cop Killer? <laughs> uh, he, 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 that's the greatest thing. Uh, Ice T had a, uh, in 1994, 93 had an album out called Cop Killer, and this is just a great ironic New York moment. He did a gig at CBGB's, and some of his crew complained that the cops were not uh, <laughs> attent- <laughs> attentive enough in the security. <laughs> They felt the cops were mailing in. <laughs> the security. Uh, really, the cops were uh, not uh, uh, enthusiastic about doing security at the cop killer concert. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm still I'm, I'm reeling from the Chelsea Handler revelations. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Nazi. <laughs> and, of course, um, I, I, the Radar Online saga goes... I hope he, uh, the, the greatest thing ever would be if the kid uh, writes that Gilbert actually said all that. About oh, yes. Him. <laughs> <laughs> she is, in fact, a cunt. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a rule. I did, that is true about Ellen DeGeneres. She is supposed to be a tyrant uh, on that, with the people who work on that. I've known a couple of writers, uh, guy writers, who she's just like emasculated because of that anger. And, uh, you know, but just like it doesn't even matter. Like the key grip, she would yell at and get. You know. And, and remember when she had that TV show where she would go on a date with a different guy? Yeah, oh, yeah. And it, it was called Insane Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Well, she had the sitcom for a while. Yeah, that was such. But, but listen, a horrible. Sitcom. Again, again, yeah. she she did the thing where again nobody shows the emperor's clothes here. She became a big deal. Because she came out 
on her fucking sitcom that was yeah. tanking. She had a sitcom that was tanking. Yeah. So at some point they get together with her agents and whoever and go. We got nothing. No, we got nothing. Yeah. Not. The, the, okay. The the original goal was to write funny things that you would say funny on a show. That's not working. Yeah. <laughs> just, okay. The show sucks. <laughs> going you, off the air. Right, and you suck on it. Yeah, we might as well go for bro. Right, so what yeah. we're going to do is we're going to take a slice of life, a slice of yeah, real life, yeah. and you're going to come out on the show. And if the timing's perfect, uh, you're going to get these. Uh, you, no one's going to, believe me, we're not going to make the show funny. That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what we're going to get. That, we, that we were dead coming in. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we found that you were the Ellen in the title. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Ellen Burstyn. <laughs> but we found out that the Ellen in the title, uh, in the in the sitcom Ellen, was you. <laughs> we knew that being knew, funny yeah. was we, something. We that, knew comedy was just... <laughs> A yeah, utopian Way goal, off. like you're, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, beyond our grasp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're talking like flying car shit. <laughs> 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 uh, someone actually said before we'll see a black president before you're funny, <laughs> and that has happened. Before you ever got funny, there has been a black president. <laughs> uh, I, I do think you'll get funny before a Jewish president. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but so 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 she yeah they said we're gonna say you're coming out of the closet. We're gonna leak to the press that uh, you know uh, surprise surprise. Ellen is gay, uh, and um, you're going to come out on your show. And but before we do it, let me practice my shocked face. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me do a spit take. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm almost as shocked as this as when Rosie O'Donnell came out of the closet. <laughs> I I still can't believe again, it. Again, again, as shocking as you coming out, it's not as shocking as you saying something funny. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we are going to, in fact, have you come out and perhaps people laugh at that, at it, you know, not with it, at it. And uh, you'll get. And again, you know, we're goofing, but that's exactly what it, what they hoped would happen. And it did. She got, you know, car, so brave. And then all these actresses wanted to be on this show. Right. They knew it was in the news. Exa the exactly. They want, you know, they want it to look like, OK, we uh, were, were sympathetic. Uh, you know, towards all this, and we're, we're friends with Ellen. And that kept the show on way longer than it, oh, it was going to well, be. Look at, and then you got people like, uh, what was the name of that actress who pretended that she was uh, gay to date her for a while so she, she could get famous? Oh, Anne Heche. Oh, yeah, Anne yeah, Heche. yeah. So then you get really, really evil people like that in Hollywood, where Anne Heche will actually, you know, pretend she's gay. She clearly wasn't. Uh, and and she, you know, to become famous, she literally held her breath and buried her face. <laughs> and Ellen DeGeneres was pussy for four years to get famous. And when she when she came up for air, she was in a Robert De Niro moment. That's what happens. That's fucking Hollywood, man. It worked for her, but then she went crazy. I think even she like goes, wow, what did I do? You yeah. Know? And uh, she was wandering. Was she wandering around backyards? Uh, oh Anne yes, Hayes, that? yes, know? yes. And I, I was like. You know, you, you bury your face in her pussy for four years. See, <laughs> see if you're not wandering around with a weird look on your face. So, uh, yeah, so stuff like that happened. And uh, and this portion of the Ross, it was smoking hot, by the way. And then, Ellen, you know, she, she parlays that into this talk show where now she can do no wrong because now she has sympathy. She cuts the hair. And, uh, you know, she looks like Neil Patrick Harris's uh, butchy brother. And, and when, you know, when, when that... Kate, when she came out, she was still going with Anne Hayes. Right. And both of them are the toast of the town. <laughs> they are, exactly, they're, yeah. They're getting movie and TV offers. Wag, she's in De Niro, the Wag the Dog, the Nero yeah. movie she's in, yeah. And, but meanwhile, at the same time, they're playing up how both of them are these blacklisted people <laughs> that they're facing the worst challenge yeah. of their lives. That is the, yeah. worst, that is the worst thing uh, 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 
especially in comedy, uh, Hollywood can do is is say something is brave when it's the easiest fucking oh, yes. thing in the world. Like you know, a black comic doing a, a saying the n word in a bit is not brave. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Michael Richards was brave. Yeah, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, it's, it's, it's they do the same thing with the you know a gay woman, go, and it's great. God, it's, it's awesome that we're we're there, but don't. Uh, don't fucking piss in my face and tell me it's, you know, it's... Uh, it's that shit on juice. a plane. <laughs> don't shit on a plane. Don't, don't piss on a plane and tell me it's shit on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> She basically she 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 parlayed it. She got like a billion dollars now on a talk yeah. show. And that was the thing. Like they would say, we were, you know, they would play them up as the struggling blacklisted people. Right. And and we interviewed her on the set of her latest movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. She's in a movie, uh, but uh, you know it it. it it really is disgusting. I mean, you had to watch Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, th th then what happens is she gets so much sympathy and she's so sort of, it's so politically incorrect to make fun of her that whatever she does is great. So that's how you get like, okay, she dances in a monologue and it's brilliant because people are afraid to make fun of her. People are afraid to say anything oh, she does is bad. And I remember they were talking on some special about Ellen DeGeneres, how she hosted the Emmys after <laughs> September 11th. <laughs> like, there's a billion people in show business that would have blown anybody right. to host well, if, the Emmys. Yeah, especially after 9-11. You know, yes. you, know, you, you could do no wrong. And, and, and I remember Anne Hayes said, uh, Ellen saved the world that day. <laughs> I said, uh, "Excuse me, how exactly?" <laughs> I think I thought the interviewer should have said, "Okay, stop, stop." Yeah. Uh, and would you Ex mind going into detail? <laughs> explain how what, she fucking saved the earth. <laughs> explain what the fuck you just said. Yes. <laughs> like the only way for a comic to to insult people and not get good press after 9/11 is if at a roast you say, "I'll have a one-way ticket to the Empire State." Yes. <laughs> Which, uh, which uh, a roast me and Gilbert were on uh, three weeks after 9/11. Uh, the uh, you have to roast for uh, and I, and I, uh, I I'm I I did I'm the comic right before Gilbert the aristocrats. <laughs> So I, I leave, I sit down, Gilbert comes up, and that's, that's a joke he does. Yeah, I... I In the said, grand ballroom of... I, the, I, I have to... It was like a day after September 11th. It, it felt like it. Yeah, it might and, and yeah, I said, I have to leave early tonight. I have to fly to L.A. I couldn't get a direct flight. We have to make a stop at the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody reacted, but it's so funny. You have her seven blonde girlfriends were in the front, and you could see them all looking at each other going what what does that mean <laughs> none of them I, i'm not even kidding i looked at them none of them knew what the fuck we were talking about. <laughs> so great so, like you like you see i got too soon too soon yeah <laughs> uh well what i had to follow that night was the word it uh fucking uh dick gregory gets up who was oh in, my uh, god uh, that, yeah. that whole thing you know, you Hefner allowed a black man yeah. into the. Playboy. Well, you Hefner had a show in the sixties called Playboy After Dark, yeah. where he, you know, was like supposed to be a, uh, you know, a, a penthouse party. Uh, yeah, eight hi. Hours. Hey, look, uh, Robert Cole <laughs> just walked in. Robert Cole, <laughs> who's going to be in shit on a plane? Uh, <laughs> So, so, yeah, so, so you know, it's supposed to be this hip thing. And meanwhile, he looked back on those things. He, he looks like the dork. He's got a pipe. He's yeah. got an eye. He's, before he got into a robe for the rest of his life. And uh, he would have, you know, comics on. People like Lenny Bruce and blah, blah, blah. And one of them was Dick Gregory, who was a black comic who did a lot of political stuff. And, uh, you know, again, he, he got more credit for being funny, like a Lenny Bruce, I think, because of what he talked about, more so than the jokes being funny. But, you know, you have to put him on TV, which wasn't, again, not a risk on you Hefner's part at all. Yeah. He could only look good. And so at this roast 40 years later, Dick Gregory gets up there. And uh, does two jokes that aren't even that good, and then abandons trying to be funny, gets real sentimental, and goes, you know, you saved my life. You said you, what you did for race relations was unbelievable. God bless you. He he, standing ovation. People start to cry, and again, uh, have seven girlfriends are going, who's that? What is it? <laughs> 
uh, and uh, which was sexy as hell. And they uh, so so you know, Hefner is crying. Dick Gregory's crying. They embrace. People are crying. A standing ovation. He leaves. The, after five minutes of crying and applause, it dies down. Jimmy Kimmel goes up to the microphone, and here's what he says. Uh, you'll recognize this next comic from Hippopotamus Week on the Discovery Channel. Here's Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, talk about digging out of a hole. Uh, I then said though, uh, "Half I smell pussy." Did you burp? And then he laughed for about three minutes, which got a bag. <laughs> and then the girl said, "What does that mean?" <laughs> uh, uh, he, it was uh, it was an interesting night. And then I did my thing, and then Gilbert got up and did the Empire. But I gotta say, did the Empire State? But he lost him a little bit. Then you said another Not then, a little bit. Well, you, yeah, you, you did the aristocrats yeah. joke. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, again, people don't realize the the version that aired on Comedy Central does not have. It was so filthy. They couldn't air it on Comedy Central. <laughs> yes. Because we aired it after midnight. They let all of us, all of us could curse. But so they show people laughing and guffawing at uh, at the aristocrat yeah. joke, but you're telling another joke on the air. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Rob Schneider's both over laughing and it, he's that. The aristocrats joke, but you're telling something else. Yeah, which was funny, but but that spawned the movie. The oh, like you yeah. telling that joke uh, spawned the, uh, the the movie Aristocrats. Your thoughts on this? Ah, uh, it was, it was yeah. called by people as the single greatest telling of a joke they ever heard. Yeah, that that was Richard what I, Belzer's dog said. That. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really I I I had, I had known the joke, and when you started telling, I was like, "What?" And I it was impressive how long uh, you. <laughs> I mean, you know, guys, you should Google it. It's on YouTube. It's amazing. But uh, did you know you were going to tell that? Did no, you, no. What, what, I, you nothing, just went into it, huh? Yeah, nothing planned. I figured after I lost the audience, you as had to get much them, as right. I did. But that's still ballsy. Yeah. I got to tell you because you lose them a little bit or a lot, and. You tell a joke, and again, any comic knows this. If you got, if you get an audience back, you got to try to get quick hits that are funny. Oh yeah. You choose to tell an eleven-minute version, <laughs> <laughs> and it's still, it's still like in the movie, The Aristocrats. You, you, a lot of the people they ask to tell it uh, try to be real filthy. They still don't get near the filth <laughs> that you approached at this fucking at this roast. And again, you. you you took a risk, and it, the, the the laughter was uh, legendary. But did you uh, think of telling another shorter joke? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I figured go to the bottom level of hell. Already. Well, listen. Yeah. You should you should think about doing the shit on a plane pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the shit in a roast pitch. All right. Uh, uh, well, we we covered everything. We promised. We covered. <laughs> By the way, Jack, I, this is very appropriate. On my, on my cell phone, Jackie Martling just texted me, where do you do the podcast? And I'm not telling him. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Martling just texted me, where is show business? I'm not uh, all right, so again. I it's fucking a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. All right, so uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, this brand of your <laughs> November 11th, you can see it live. If, uh, you know, you hear one of the uh, 111 people who get into the uh, Carolines, it's probably one of the bigger things at the New York Comedy Festival this year. I believe Judd Apatow's doing Carnegie Hall. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think Dick Gregory is telling that same story. And uh, I think uh, Gilbert and I are at Caroline. <laughs> Basically just repeating what we did today. Uh, but November 11th, Caroline, 7 p.m. Is there a special uh, way to get tickets? It's called Caroline's, right? Caroline's. Yeah. Um, Gilbert yeah, Gilbert, oh, GilbertGodfrey.com. Okay. Oh, yes. And, uh, well, you could also hear my podcast, <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Class. By the way, a, a congratulations is in order. Uh, wait, the Village Voice, Village Voice uh, voted you best podcast. Oh, yes. That, uh, come on, let's give it up. And I was very flattered by the article because it said, you know, it listed guests and it said, but especially Artie Lang. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it said it was a, they were very, very complimentary. Uh, now, what do you get for that? Did you get a trip somewhere? Uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get a green Wrangler shirt? <laughs> Uh, no, but the, well, how does it feel? Because the Village Voice probably run by homosexuals who you've <laughs> done nothing but abuse in your act for years. I mean, that, that is touching that they came. Will you, in fact, feel guilty about all the gay material you've done? <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> so how about your bit fags on a plane? <laughs> Fag shit on a plane, you will. You, you, I think you, you will change. Now the village voice is like you. You yeah. will change that. Okay. I hope you do. And I hope that the radar online uh, prints that you said all that stuff. <laughs> I want to say I had nothing to do. The other thing that's great is it says in the in this uh, article it says C star star T, and you just assumed it was cunt. You put- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you really hit it. You really hit it. You really, you wound that up. Like you saw, you, I mean, you literally yeah. a wind up. You said, yeah. cunt! And, and then Howard yeah. said, because this proves she is, in fact, a cunt! <laughs> That, that, that is like that. That's that's that is fucking the wind up of Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Oh, you're a cunt. <laughs> Your you, mother's a cunt. You are a cunt. <laughs> She's a cunt, Alice. A cunt. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, uh, November 11th, 7 p.m., Caroline, check this out and uh, and uh, go to carolines.com. Go for coffee. This is Artie Quitter, ArtieQuitter.com <laughs> for all things Artie. Uh, thank you to what is a cameraman? So let's let's mention the filmmaker here. Uh, let's break the fourth wall. What uh, wait, uh, do you want anything to say? You want to plug anything? How, how did this come about? I'm real curious. How, how, how did the, you, you're, the, you're doing a documentary on Gilbert. This is uh, very meta of us right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, how far down the list was he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who said no? It's like, okay, Yakov Shmirnov <laughs> definitely passed. Did you call everyone with their own theater in Branson, Missouri? <laughs> 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 Did you, call, did you call a lot of funny dentists? <laughs> How far down? How far down? No, how did this come about? Uh, I I know Dara through a friend, and, okay. I, and I said I want to make a, a documentary about Gilbert. And wow, this was a, great. Y- a year and a half ago, and she called me. She, she called me in June and said we've been going to every reality show, and uh, I think we should make a documentary. Just come out with your camera and start doing it, and maybe he won't notice. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> so, no, it's only, about, it's only about a month in. Good luck with it, and uh, believe me. I'm playing hardball to sign any release. Uh, my uh, one of my agents who called me, uh, you know, wants me to, does want me to play hardball about with the. Uh, yeah. That that's right. what agents we were talking about. Yeah. That. Agents can do one of two things. They can't get you the job. <laughs> but once you get the job, right. they can either make unnecessary changes in the contract <laughs> or tell you to pass because they know it's a bad thing. Well, this kid, this was a younger guy at my agency, and he was, uh, he, was he wanted me to maybe hold out for some money. And again, uh, don't read into what I'm saying. What I, uh, I'm, I'd like to point out that while he was saying this, I could almost hear the headset he was wearing uh, scratching against his yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, he may or may not have been part of Gilbert's race. I don't know. But, uh, he had some interesting ideas on how to monetize me being in this. Me being in this documentary. Do you have a title yet for it? Uh, no. How about uh, for you? How about last thing I've ever done? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Artie Quitter, I got Flippin', I got to say before we go, Flippin' is an enormous Met fan. He's been waiting for years. Uh, he's 30 years old. He's a virgin. He's, ne- he's just never, never done anything but look at the Mets and the Giants. Dude, how excited are you? What time is first pitch, wasn't it? Uh, 8 o'clock. Eight, now, who's pitching for the Mets? Harvey. Harvey's going. Are you happy with that? He's had a good postseason, right? Yeah, he has had a good postseason. Yeah. One start was kind of okay. In the NLCS, he really dominated. Um, the Royals are tough, man. I yeah. mean, you know, no they, 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 last year they were scrappy. It might be the, you know, they go second year in a row. But the Mets, again, with the pitching staff the Mets have, any seven game series, I think you're, you're okay, right? Yeah, they, they have a big advantage in the starting pitching. Uh, the only thing is that the Mets defense is really eh, kind of not Yeah, so I was saying that. The Mets defense. <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert and I were talking it's, it's about it. It's kind of. Yeah, Gilbert again did not grow up athletic. Uh, <laughs> uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah. But of course, stay uh, tuned for this shocking news. Uh, yeah, but of course that that is true though. That, you know, Yogi Berra and Phil Rizzuto they talked about how they grew up in Brooklyn or St. Louis. They wanted to be Cardinals. They wanted to be Yankees. And again, the players nowadays, you know, no one, <laughs> no one grew up in the Dominican Republic wanting to be a Met. They're all just, uh, <laughs> they got the money. But uh, the Mets have a great team. 
And uh, good luck. Good luck, buddy. As, as I, I, I'm, I don't have the hatred. I, I've grown up. When the 86 Mets played, I had a hatred for Mets fans. Yeah. And the Mets. And um, I think I've softened your hatred for them. Well, no, bit. I mean, uh, years of, uh, of, of life just uh, beating me down with <laughs> me getting a fresh coat of failure every four years. <laughs> yeah. Has, uh, has, I see them in a new light. I uh, know, right. I know. I, uh, listen, I, I didn't realize how cool that Mets team was. Doing blow, fighting everybody. Yeah. I should have liked them. Yeah. Kevin Mitchell should be in prison, for Christ's sake. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, so good luck, and um, I'm rooting for you. Thanks, I'm officially, I think I'm officially rooting for the Mets. Yeah, plus uh, screw the Royals, right? Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Fuck them. <laughs> I'm a Yankee fan, so I've always hated the Royals. That was so. a rivalry once in yeah, a while. Yeah, time. big time. Yeah. Big time. Uh, and very racial as well. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Dan Filato, great job sitting in the kitchen and watching me fumble, try to find the, uh, an article. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go. Dara Gottfried, uh, you've brightened up the day again. And uh, that's it, Gilbert. Thanks, buddy. I'll see you November 11th. Right? Yes, and the Mets have got a great defense. <laughs> Can I just say that, please? <laughs> I, well, I hope Quentin Tarantino does. <laughs> Hey guys, this is James Flippin of RadioMisfits.com and also one of the behind-the-scenes guys for the Artie Quitter podcast. Right now, you're listening to the free weekly edition of the Artie Quitter Uncensored podcast on the Radio Misfits Network. If you'd like to hear more, visit ArtieQuitter.com and subscribe to the four-day-a-week podcast. Use coupon code ARTIEFAN, that's A-R-T-I-E-F-A-N, and get your first month free. The Artie Lang Uncensored Podcast. Because this proves she is, in fact, a cunt! <laughs>